Um, moving on to another wonderful human being, Sir David Amos. This man is one of my favourite people of all time. One of the longest serving MPs with a great wealth of experience and fascinating stories. And if you're to read his excellent book, Eyes and Ears of Westminster, you'll understand why. There's also a great picture of me in there with Lorraine, so <laughs> just get the book for that. <laughs> uh, no, we, we share the same passion for animal welfare. And as the younger generation on table five would say, he is the absolute goat. For everybody else in the room, that means greatest of all time. Um, yes, yeah, so David did an event for us back in 2018. I introduced him then, and it gives me just as much pride and pleasure to introduce you to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend Sir David Amos. Of course you don't have to use a microphone. I just love people to him. Uh, Elise, Dominic, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, I feel after that build-up I'm under even more pressure than usual. But uh, Elise, when I was in your beautiful house three or four years ago, the world has changed. Um, we've left the European Union from my point of view, thank God for that. Uh, but we've suffered the coronavirus pandemic. And I wanted to say to you all at the outset that your Member of Parliament has had a very, very torrid time. And no one should forget that, from my point of view, I and my parliamentary colleagues owe everything to Dominic for making sure that we did leave the European Union. Yeah. And, and going on to the pandemic, I will never forget but when our Prime Minister lay very unwell in St Thomas's Hospital, who was it who led this country and stepped up to the mark? Your own Member of Parliament, Dominic Raab. So, Elise, I'm very glad that he is the Deputy Prime Minister. Because with the journey that we're on at the moment, you never know what's going to happen next. And your Member of Parliament is just one heartbeat away from number 10. And I think the good residents of this constituency and our nation can be so pleased that we have someone of the calibre and integrity of Dominic Raab. And he will absolutely transform the Gilbert and Sullivan Opera now as the Lord Chancellor. <laughs> so I do wish you well, Dominic, with your uh, role. Now, if I can uh, just say something about the women's organisation. Rosemary, you look stunning. And Dominic, things have changed so much. When I first started in politics, you wouldn't have all these glamorous ladies that we now have as members of the party. You look wonderful, ladies, and uh, it's so good that we have so many more younger people, certainly when I first joined. And I do think, Elise, to have kept your organisation going for 10 years uh, is absolutely brilliant. You know, you are a volunteer but you've been absolutely wonderful. And ladies and gentlemen, I have been around for a long time. There are now only seven Conservative members of Parliament who remain in Westminster who were there when Margaret Thatcher was our Prime Minister. And I was there when she was at the peak of her powers. And yes, I'm going to say it, Dominic, as far as I'm concerned, in my time as an MP, she is way, way up there as the best. She made our country a better place in which to live and together with Mikhail Gorbachev, Ronald Reagan, with the three of them did business and the world was a far better place. So I've got no problem with women taking over the world. Um, if any of you haven't got any children, you may not see it like 
like I now feel together with my wife, it's a blessing. We were daft enough to have five. A boy and four girls, so I'm in a very dominated female house, frankly. And uh, I don't believe in the equality of men and women. I think women, by and large, are superior. You live longer and you take pressure a lot better than we men. So I want to congratulate you, Elise, on everything that you've achieved. Together, dare I say, with Lorraine. Now look, ladies and gentlemen, the three of us, together with many other people in the room, are obsessed with animals. And why are we obsessed with animals? As long as you feed them, they are grateful for everything that you do for them. You know, when I go home and there'd be all moans, at least the dog is there wagging its tail and being prepared to lick me. And I think it's absolutely fantastic that these two ladies from this constituency has transformed the perception of my party in terms of animal welfare. So through the Conservative Animal Welfare legislation, they've campaigned on a vast number of issues, including food labelling, ending cages for hens, pet theft, live animal ex 